Hello everyone, I'm JG and welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm bringing you guys a brand new catch-up review video, a series where I talk about some albums released this year that I didn't have a chance to review when they first came out for whatever reason. Maybe it's because uh, I just didn't have enough time to get to it and it's just been on my schedule to get to it. I didn't get to it till about now. Or maybe it's an album that I never intended on checking out, but after hearing good things about it uh, from other reviewers or things like that, I decided to listen to it and enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it and want to share my thoughts uh, about it here in this series. So that's really what's going to be going on here today. I have three projects I'm going to be talking about. I won't be able to go into as much detail for some of them as I would in a normal review because I do have to keep things a little bit shorter here for this video, unfortunately. But I will try to get my thoughts out as you know quickly and to the point as I can for these three projects that we're going to be talking about here in this video. So with that said, we're going to st get started with the first project I want to talk about here today, which is the most recent EP from Suicidal Tendencies entitled Get Your Fight On. This EP came out last March, and the reason why I'm talking about this one here in this video in particular is because the group has a new album coming out September 7th, and I do plan on covering that. So I figured before I hear their new album they have coming out this year, I should talk about the newest EP that they dropped earlier this year. This is one that I planned on checking out, but just didn't get around to it in like March, I believe, when it came out. And uh, it's just been, you know, I've been meaning to get to it. And with the new the news that they're going to be having a new album out, I was like, okay, I'm going to go listen to it now then and talk about it. So this EP uh, is, is somewhat interesting in some regard because it's a pretty long EP. Like, it's, it's like an album's length of content that you get here. It's like 40-something-ish minutes in length of material you're getting here on this EP. And there really seems to be two different halves to this EP, if you will. The first half has uh, just, you know, more typical songs, I guess you could say. Uh, and then the second half includes uh, the track Get Your Fight On, which appeared on their last studio album released back in 2016, and several alternate versions of that track. Uh, so it's kind of like there's two separate ideas going on here in this EP that are kind of being mashed together into this one bigger album length EP. As I said, the first half or so of this EP features uh, a, you know, pretty much original songs. I would say there is uh, a cover track in here as well, and there's also two tracks that are re-recordings of uh, songs released by one of the band members' side projects. Uh, so they're kind of like new original songs, but they're kind of not at the same time. I'm just, I'm just going to classify them as you know original songs in comparison to the second half, which is just multiple versions of the same song pretty much, but uh, the first half or so of this EP, it's solid, it's decent, I would say. I don't think any of the cuts here really stand out as being super great. Like, they're, they're decent songs, but none of them really blew me away or anything quite like that. None of them were bad or, you know, were a, a trouble to listen to or anything quite like that, but uh, they, they were fine for what they were. And then the second half of this EP, which has multiple versions of the song Get Your Fight On, as well as the actual song itself, it's certainly an interesting uh, part of this EP, I guess you could say. It was definitely one that I think will be a bit more appreciated by hardcore fans of this group, uh, given that I feel like more casual fans aren't going to really care to hear, you know, multiple different versions of this one track. You get an acoustic version, you get a, like, bass guitar version, you get, like, a, an electric uh, you know, guitar version as well. It's, you know, it's interesting to hear the track done in all these different ways. I will say that. It definitely was uh, an interesting listening experience. However, it's, it's not one that I think I am, you know, super interested to, in returning to at a later point or anything quite like that. Especially if you're listening to this EP from start to finish. You know, having just the multiple different versions of this track right after another over and over again can get to be a little bit tiresome. Uh, and just combine that with the fact that this EP is as long as it is. Like I said, it's like an album's worth of content on here. Uh, it can lead to this project feeling a little bit uh, unnecessarily long at times. I honestly feel like this should have been two separate EPs. The first, uh, you know, part of it should have been its own EP. And then the second part with the different versions of Get Your Fight On, that should have been its own EP as well. That they should have just released at some point. Point really because I feel like that would have made it a bit easier to digest overall uh, and I feel like you know after listening to the first few tracks or so on here that are you know the, the flow is, is pretty solid I would say it's not like they flow into each other super nicely or anything like that it's obvious that they just have a similar sound so they just work together when put back to back 
Uh, but, you know, after that, in that part where it's all pretty solid, uh, once you get to the second half or so where everything is, you know, just multiple versions of the same song, it might get to be a little bit... Uh, not redundant necessary to listen to, but some people may not care for it quite as much. And I feel like had this been broken up into two EPs instead, you know, really uh, some people could have checked out the, the first half on its own. And then, you know, maybe the most hardcore of hardcore fans could check out the second half for what that offered there. And I know it's an EP, so listening to it from start to finish isn't quite, you know, as important as it would be for an album necessarily. But, you know, for me, as, as, a, as a listener, I like listening to projects in full. If I'm not listening to it, like, in full, it kind of bothers me to some extent. Uh, so, you know, I, I would always listen to this thing from start to end. And uh, it, it's, a, it's an okay project, I would say. It's definitely one I would say is more for the hardcore fans than the casual fans, like I said. But, um, yeah, if you are a hardcore fan, I think you might get some enjoyment out of it. But for me, it was just an okay project. Alright, folks, next up we have another EP that we're talking about. This one actually comes from someone else in the music YouTuber community, Viral Rack. However, he's released this EP under the name, and I'm probably going to butcher this, but uh, bear with me. Uh, Charlemagne's Menagerie. Hopefully I'm saying that close to what what it is, but not super important in the grand scheme of things. I guess this is an EP that he put out earlier this year. Uh, it's a chiptune EP. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what chiptune is, it's basically like older video game music, like from the original Nintendo, 8-bit, uh, 16-bit era, that type of music, uh, really. So if you like the music in games from that period, like the original Mario or Legend of Zelda or Metroid, things like that... That's kind of what the, this EP sounds like. It's the same style of music, if you're unfamiliar with what that is. This is EP has six tracks in it, all of which are pretty short in terms of their length. The longest cut on here is just a little bit under two minutes in length. So, you know, it's a very short EP. This is kind of like the opposite of the EP we were just talking about with the Suicidal Tendencies Project, because this one breezes what right by you pretty much. And the, you know, the, pretty much the reason I can kind of deduce as to why the tracks here are so short is that, you know, if they were incorporated into a video game, say, uh, they would, you know, in a, in a video game like, you know, Mario or Metroid, like the originals, uh, the, the music would just loop over and over. So, you know, you'd be listening to the music and it just kind of repeats itself over and over again. So that's why all these are relatively short when it comes to their length. And, you know, despite the fact that all these tracks are relatively short on this EP, they all manage to have a fair bit of personality to them. Uh, just, you know, looking at the track titles as well as just the sound associated with the track because, of course, you don't have any lyrics uh, in these songs to go, you know, along with to kind of deduce a meaning or feel. Uh, you really just have to go off the title of the song and just the music itself. But very clearly, just from the first few seconds of every cut, you could pretty much tell what type of feel each song is supposed to have here on this EP. For example, a track like Some Safe Feelings has a kind of, you know, upbeat, happy sort of feel to it, which kind of, you know, going along with the title of the track of Some Safe Feelings, you can kind of imagine that this would maybe pair up with like a, a more relaxed or happier moment in like a video game, like a part where maybe you're not in any danger or anything like that. Uh, you also have tracks like Sewer Vampires, which just has a lot more of an intense feel to it. It kind of feels like something that you would have like while you're traversing through a level or something like that, fighting off, I don't know, maybe like sewer vampires or something. I don't know. Uh, I just felt like with the majority of the cuts on this thing, as I was listening to them, I was able to kind of envision what type of game they might be, you know, paired up with, uh, which is pretty, which is a pretty good thing considering that there isn't an actual game pairing up with any of this. I really don't have any major complaints with this project. Maybe just that, you know, given how short it is, maybe I wish there were maybe a few more tracks added into the project just to make it feel a little bit longer, considering I was enjoying the project uh, a good amount and it was, you know, a bit on the shorter end of things. But still, you know, that's a pretty minor complaint overall. Pretty much, it's a pretty solid uh, chip tune project. I know I typically don't review projects in that genre really all that much, but this is one that's worth checking out if you're interested in that style of music or anything quite uh, like that. It's a solid EP overall. It would definitely uh, get my, you know, approval. Alright folks, last but certainly not least, we have the new album from Denzel Curry that I'm going to be talking about. Now Denzel Curry is a rapper that I've heard, heard lots of good things about in recent years, but I haven't gotten around to checking him out really uh, until now, and I figured since he had a new album out and I heard good things about it, now is as good as time as any to, you know, give his project a full listen. 
and I did, and I gave it several more full listens because I happen to really love this thing. In fact, as of right now, it's one of my favorite albums of the year. I really love what Denzel Curry was doing here on this project. It's broken up into three different segments, uh, getting progressively darker in terms of the tone as it goes along, and I especially like the darkest moments on this project. So, of course, the last third was really my favorite of the three. You have cuts like The Blackest Balloon that just has a very dark... Uh, kind of suffocating, horrific feel to it. He's referencing things like horror movies in the song itself, and it feels like this track feels like it could be, you know, put together like with a horror movie and match up very nicely uh, just because of the tone and just the atmosphere that it has going along with it. You also have uh, some other great tracks like Vengeance, which just has a very aggressive feel, and the closing track, Black Metal Terrace, which I also really like. Uh, just, I love a lot of the aggression that he manages to bring on this album, not just in tracks like those, but also in tracks earlier in the track listing, like Sumo and many others where he's just he really going hard for the entire length of the song, but still managing to have good lyrics in there as well, as well as showing off his good rapping skills. He's definitely someone who is not only a good rapper, but he's able to have good content in his raps as well, which I think is just as important as being a good rapper. And of course, the subject matter on this album ranges from him bragging about things to, of course, very dark uh, stuff, as you might guess, based on the whole concept behind the album. Uh, you have tracks, for example, like, you know, I mentioned uh, The Blackest Balloon before, which brings up things like uh, drug use and, you know, uh, especially relating to things like the current o opioid kind of crisis that's been going on and how that's kind of affected the, you know, hip-hop scene in some regards. Also bringing up things like his own popularity and how he kind of feels like people are, you know, maybe uh, kind of going after him to some extent uh, just because of his own popularity on the track Cloud Cobain, which also shows him uh, being able to pull off this kind of sad, you know, rapper thing really well. And what I mean by that is kind of, you know, the whole kind of sad rapper type vibe that I feel like many artists are kind of trying to do nowadays, but not really doing all that well. Kind of the whole emo rap sort of thing, I guess, would be a better way to put it. Uh, but I feel like Denzel Curry does it really well here on this track because he's able to, ha you know, provide some great lyrics here as well. Uh, the beat works very well here. Um, I also like his singing on this track as well. Uh, it just it comes together very nicely here, and he's able to pull off what many rappers, I think, try to do, but don't do all that well. Uh, he's able to do it, uh, you know, effortlessly, it seems. A lot of the production on this album is, of course, dark sounding and just very trappy. He just goes very hard for the entire run. And Denzel Curry definitely showcases how, you know, you could definitely be an artist rapping over trap, you know, styled instrumentals, but still have, you know, a lot of substance in your lyrics and just be an overall very good rapper in terms of, you know, your technical ability. And I like that overall, that he's showcasing that not all trap music is just this one-dimensional sort of thing that lots of people seem to, you know, think. There's a lot more depth to it, you know, if you're willing to put in the, the work to find artists like Denzel Curry that are making music like this. And I feel like the production paired with his rapping ability and just the subject matter of these songs creates a, a pretty, you know, horrifying project in some regard in terms of the subject matter on here. Not like hor it's a horrifying thing to listen to in the sense that it's bad because it's a great project. Uh, it's definitely dark, and I, I happen to like dark-sounding projects, so of course this was right up my alley, really. Uh, excellent rapping, excellent production, uh, excellent subject matter, uh, great features on here as well. Uh, I feel like all the features on here really just added to the tracks that they were on, providing a new, uh, you know, just a new element that wasn't present there before. They all really just do a great job on this thing. Uh, if there's any complaints I have, maybe there's a couple tracks here or there in the track listing that I, you know, feel a bit more, like, okay in comparison to some of the better cuts on here. Not that they're, like, awful songs or anything like that. In fact, I don't feel like any of the cuts on here are, you know, worse than good. But, uh, there's some that, you know, don't stand out to me quite as much in comparison to some of the others. But, you know, but that's a pretty, it's a pretty good, uh, negative thing to have about your album. Uh, because it means the rest of the album is really good. So, yeah. Uh, I really like this project. I would highly recommend it to you if you're a fan of hip-hop music because uh, this is, it's, like I said, one of my favorite albums of the year so far. And it's a shame I can't talk about it in a little bit more detail given the format of this review series. But I have a, a feeling that I'm going to be talking about it more in the future, like maybe in my best albums of the year list at the end of the year. Uh, maybe, I mean, probably. I mean, as of right now, it, it's certainly going to be there. But yeah, great project. And with that said, guys... 
Those are all three of the reviews I have to get out of the way here today in this video. Just my own personal opinions on all three of these. So if you happen to have a different opinion, that's perfectly fine. In fact, feel free to leave your opinion on either three of these projects in the comment section down below. I'd greatly appreciate seeing them. And while you're down there, make sure to also hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more music related content in the future. Things like album reviews, countdown list, discussions, track reviews, all that good stuff. If you don't want to miss out on it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And with that said, guys, thank you for watching this catch-up review, uh, and stay golden.